One of the big issues that became prominent in 2020 and will continue to be so is diversity and inclusion in corporate boardrooms. Let's bring into the stream Agon Zender's 2020 Global Board Diversity Tracker findings, along with Cynthia Soledad, co-lead diversity and inclusion practice person at Agon Zender. Good to have you here. Uh, let's get right to the numbers, because one of the things you found is that 570 out of 577 U.S.-based companies surveyed say they have at least one person on the board who is a woman, but there's still very large companies that don't. You want to name a few of these uh, companies? Well, we don't like to name and shame. <laughs> Why not? I think, Let's I think go for it. <laughs> well, I think what's important to emphasize is um, there has been progress on gender diversity on boards, but it's been slow. And um, I think what we're seeing this year is, um, is hopefully an acceleration of focus um, and therefore an acceleration of progress. And what we're also really, really happy about, and you'll see this reflected in the report, is the conversation has expanded beyond gender diversity into many other forms of identity diversity. Um, and there's yet more progress to be made. Cynthia, what are some of the things that you think companies can do to better promote diversity and inclusion since some of this progress has been relatively slow? Yeah, I think you know, there are a couple key action steps that we think are critical and are not that, uh, that difficult to achieve. One really critical thing is actually we know that a lot of board seats historically have been filled through existing networks. People who are already sitting on the boards reach out to people that they know. That tends to propagate um, a lot of homogeneity. In order to really advance diverse representation on boards, you have to break out of known networks um, and really have a definitive goal about bringing on underrepresented voices, underrepresented identities into the board and ensuring that the networks that you're looking at, the slates that you're bringing onto, um, into board searches, represent those underrepresented identities. So that's a critical piece. Um, and what we know there, there, as well, yeah, please. But, but when you talk about inclusion, and one of the things you see with boards, whether it's today or go years past, is you see the same people repeatedly on different boards. For instance, and I don't want to diminish Melody Hobson in any way, this woman is incredibly accomplished, the co-CEO of Ariel Investments, but it was announced today that she is going to serve uh, on the non, in a non-executive role on the board at Starbucks. She's accomplished and a great person to have. But there's so many other people out there who are also accomplished and, and great to have. Do boards, when you keep putting the same people on different boards, you close out the opportunity for others. Is that changing? Yes, it, I do think it is changing, and I think it needs to continue to change. Um, you are absolutely right that the dynamic um, we have seen over the last few years is women and people of color who are serving on boards already get tapped multiple times and are boarded up. And there is a giant pool of talent um, out there that, um, that would bring great experience onto a board but need to have that first step to join their first board. Um, that's really part of what we encourage as well when opening up the, the um, slates of candidates to consider. Do consider first-time board directors and be prepared to have um, a strong onboarding and integration uh, and development program for those who are joining their first board. But that's a, that's a very obvious way to increase um, the talent pool that's in consideration. Cynthia, this is a top priority in the U in the U.S., but what does it look like on a global scale? Well, I think what's really fascinating is actually outside the U.S., we've seen some countries that, um, frankly, sometimes driven by quotas, they have made more progress on gender diversity on boards than we have seen in the U.S. Um, so that is interesting. Now, some of the conversation around racial and ethnic diversity and making progress on that is um, is faster in the U.S. or more a more I would say a higher volume conversation occurring on that in the U.S. that is starting to um, to really establish itself in other places. Um, so it's a different dynamic depending on that dimension of diversity that we're talking about. Um, but I think what we are seeing is in all parts of the world the concept of increasing diversity on boards, starting with oftentimes starting with gender and international diversity and then expanding beyond that is a maturation cycle that I think we'll see repeated in multiple countries.
I have a buddy, I can't say the name of the company, but works at a firm or used to work at a firm. Uh, their sole job is to recruit C-suite, but also uh, vet potential board members. Those firms which do that, are you seeing them include the kinds of things that would bring in more diverse people? Absolutely. I think everybody who works in the space of identifying great talent for senior leadership roles, both executive leadership roles and board leadership roles, it's table stakes that the networks that, um, that frankly, firms like Aegon Zender are playing in are incredibly diverse. Um, and, you know, we see that as part of our mission, frankly, um, because Firms like ours play a significant role in um, in determining what the face of leadership looks like in the future. So it is absolutely critical in table stakes that um, that the networks of candidates that we know and that we introduce are diverse networks. We want to thank you for joining us, Cynthia Soledad, co-lead diversity and inclusion practice at Aegon Zender. All the best to you.